So our developer extension went through some major refactorings this year, and we're excited to have already 330,000 downloads. Um, but let's see how it works under the hood, right? So we provide editor support for our schema language via LSP, the language server protocol, which standardizes how things like atom completions, uh, jump to definition, and other editor features work in our extension. We use the Microsoft uh, implementation of it, targeting VS Code. But the cool thing is that the LSP is actually editor agnostic, so it can be used with several editors of your choice. Um, we have developed that in TypeScript, but we also use Rust uh, under the hood. right? So we reuse some logic that comes uh, with uh, Prism CLI commands, like the format command that's used for parsing, formatting our uh, schema in a human readable way, and also for providing some linting information. Uh, of course, we also had a few gotchas uh, while developing this. For instance, uh, when using the Prisma client, we had to um, watch for uh, changes in the types generated by the client, and we weren't able to do that with the file watcher supported by VS Code by default. So we had to work around that with a custom file watcher. And moreover, we have to manually restore the TypeScript server every time we change the client types, because the TypeScript server, every, one, every once in a while, doesn't really uh, realize that things have changed under the hood. So got to be honest, Rust is an awesome language for writing parsers, especially for our um, schema parser. Uh, the thing is, when you have to use it from a TypeScript server, things can get a bit difficult. So we used to you know, sp spawn child processes and then try to parse uh, the CLI output from Rust binaries. Uh, but that's kind of unsafe, error prone. right? You never know what you're going to get. Uh, you can also have uh, a, a whole set of uh, problems that might come from the loading binaries that can be targeting different architectures and operating systems. Um, Especially if you consider a VS Code extension, like a sandbox, um, it m might be hard to download a binary to use as a sidecar. And it comes with a whole um, set of security issues and concerns. And the VS Code editor doesn't really like that. Uh, so that's a problem. So what do we do? Enter WebAssembly. So what we did was taking the formatter, Rust, um, Rather than uh, compiling that to a binary, we compile that to a single uh, cross-platform WASM artifact that can be loaded by the Node.js platform uh, at runtime as any other Node module. So we use that, uh, again, in the backend for our um, schema language server. And it just works. It just works. This allows us to get rid of a whole class of potential errors uh, that comes from downloading uh, the binaries. Because, uh, you know, Downloads can fail in pretty creative ways. We really don't want that, especially for a Prisma extension that's used by so many developers. We also support uh, context-aware auto-completions. So what do we mean by that? We try to provide the best auto-completions possible depending on how much you fill the schema, how many uh, of our optional fields you actually fill. Right? So for instance, if you select a, a data source a provider, you might get more accurate um, auto-completions than if you don't, of course. And for just seeing an example, let's take a look at um, this diff right here. Like we have um, a Postgres, Postgres provider, which is remarkably similar to the Cockroach provider in terms of interface exposed. However, there are some native types that change um, drastically. For instance, you can see here, you can see the red squiggly line uh, provided by our linting uh, in, the, in the editor. Uh, let's, let's take a look at the Postgres. It supports the XML, file, XML um, data type. The Cockroach DB doesn't, and our um, auto suggestions reflect that. So I really encourage you to try out our Prisma uh, extension and try to see how the, our auto completions may change. And before leaving you, I would like to share with you guys um, and folks this tweet right here that I found yesterday. If your developer tool is not running in the editor, it's running too late. So what we mean by that is that developers really want 
uh, for optimal developer experience, they want things to run where they work the most of the time, which is on the editor. So having created the Prisma developer um, extension just makes sense. And that's it for me. Thank you for this. Um, I really hope to have sparked your curiosity. And now we have time for a few questions. Any questions so far? All right. Um, is there any timeline for uh, some more development on the side of WebStorm and the uh, plugins there? So there are some community supported um, extensions targeting, for instance, Emacs and Vim. And they indeed use the same uh, backend that we provide for our own extension. What changes is just the front end of it. Uh, so they do have to implement their own syntax highlighting and just plug in a few things. But most of the, you know, the core of the extension is actually uh, re reutilized. But we officially support only the VS Code extension. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so I'm sure compiling Rust to WebAssembly instead of the binary is convenient and it's probably good for supporting uh, the web as well and stuff like that. But out of curiosity, is there, was there uh, a performance or, or a significant performance difference between using the binary and using the um, WebAssembly, essentially, uh, uh, as in the Node engine? So two things here. First of all, to answer your question directly, I do not have the data at hand to like tell you exactly uh, what were the performance differences. Uh, but I can also tell you that we were able to use Wasm because the formatter like, doesn't need anything too fancy under the hood. It doesn't need to run I.O. It just needs you know, our schema and input, and then it returns an output that we parse and display in a fancy way. Uh, if it had like, so, uh, more complex things running over, then we probably wouldn't be able to port it to web WebAssembly as of today. We will probably need WASI or something like that. So uh, the answer, short answer is, I don't know yet. <laughs> If there aren't any other questions, I think we can wrap it up. All right. Thank you, Thank you so much.